What might the development of a branch public library tell about the history of living and learning in a New York City neighborhood? Students enrolled in a spring 2015 course in the history of education at Teachers College answered this question using the archival records of a branch of the New York Public Library as a starting point. They curated digital exhibitions based on their findings and by doing research in the archives became better acquainted with how history is constructed and interpreted. I'm Betty Wenick. I'm the Associate Director of the Teachers College Center on History and Education. I also serve as a lecturer in the program in History and Education at TC. The course is about the history of education in New York City, but specifically from the perspective of different populations, New York City populations, including African Americans, Europe, members of European, Latino, and Asian populations. And the idea is to look at those populations, their social histories, as they are part and parcel of New York neighborhood life during distinct periods of the city's history. We're looking at that history of education in New York City from two different perspectives. One in terms of scholarship in the history of education, and also in terms of how we might invigorate, reinvigorate history education on the K through 12 level. So the history of education, local educational history, becomes the entry point for our interest in reinvigorating history education in the public school classroom. There's something so meaningful and special about like actually touching these documents and knowing that like they are they can't be replicated really even if they're digitized um, it's not the same as like actually going to the archival and opening up that box and I think that that is something that needs to happen in the classroom I would love for my students to realize how history is written and that includes looking at archival documents and identifying the certain bias of a document and then having them um, you know, create something for themselves. I wish I could do something like the, t the workshop that we had with Ty Jones in a, in a history classroom. Like that would be incredible to, for students to see that, like, look, these documents have never really been looked at before and you have the power to like construct something out of it. If I'm interested in teaching students about the historical process and about shaping a historical interpretation, and they're able to draw on so many resources, both digital resources and the physical archives, in creating these exhibition pages, that they have to go through a very important process of selection as they do that. And in that process of selection, I think they are learning a great deal about how to shape a historical interpretation or perspective. I think it, it was really important in understanding how histories are constructed so going, reading primary source documents and secondary source documents and seeing um, kind of the, the constructedness of history um, and not that it doesn't kind of have a, a, really, a close relation to, to fact and um, what has happened, but how it becomes subjectivized and turned into a narrative based on the story that the historian is trying to tell. And so seeing myself as a kind of historian trying to tell a story, I saw how I used primary source information and employed it to tell the story I was trying to tell, but also at the same time how you can't, it's not a fiction and that I'm telling this completely new story and it's that I'm just trying to package what I've learned into a more coherent, cohesive narrative that's saying something. And so I think that's helpful as a pre-service teacher um, in understanding how to help students understand history and how it's constructed. And I think reflecting on myself as a high school student, I saw primary source documents and secondary source documents as sacred in a way and kind of I couldn't break them apart and understand how they were being made. And so this project really helped me um, do that firsthand and I think will, would help me as a teacher uh, help students undergo that same kind of evaluation. We want students to be able to find themselves in the grand American historical narrative and also part of historical literacy. I mean, we want to free ourselves from dependence, the dependency on a textbook and really enable students 
to understand more of the historical process, capturing more of that for them so that they, they have a greater appreciation for what the historian does, but also for how that grand American historical narrative is in fact shaped. And even just uh, conversations with my, with my classmates and, and my family, talking to, talking to them about my research, uh, I was able to kind of uh, revisit the records with a different mindset, with a different perspective. And in doing so, I was able to look for, look for things that I, I could potentially talk about in my research. It felt cool and special and important to be um, using this sort of raw primary material and having to come up with our own historical narrative. So it felt like a more direct interface with the material. Um, and we had, when we read secondary sources, there's already kind of a thesis built in, a narrative that's being told, but with the, the primary sources that we were reading, um, it, was, it was up to us to figure out how do we represent this in a narrative, how do we tell a story about it while still being truthful to what the original authors were saying and intending. When we send students into the archives to do research, they are able to develop an appreciation for themselves about how history is constructed, how exciting it can be to be able to shape a number of different perspectives from really the same archival records, to be able to exhibit that, to share that with other students, and hopefully to arrive at strategies that they can take into their own classroom to encourage those aspects of historical literacy. Well, I think just the experience of going to the library, to the archival room in and of itself was really valuable, just figuring out from uh, submitting a research request online to um, just getting up the stairs to figuring out what to bring, what to prepare, how to go through these documents, how to prioritize my time how to forget that I was hungry while I was locked in the room all day. Like, the, that was all an educational experience in and of itself. I am very pleased as the instructor to see the products, the exhibitions, um, on the wiki pages that the students uh, created. I think that they, um, they communicated enormous enthusiasm in being able to come to, to have this practical experience with archival research. I think they came into my office sometimes confused and worried that they wouldn't be able to shape a single narrative. But after talking with them and reassuring them, they really shaped very, very interesting stories. And I think that they should take enormous pride in the fact that they wrote historical narratives that really have not seen the light of day before, that they mined archival resources that nobody had ever really taken a good look at. And not only are those resources useful about the history of these branch libraries, but they're resources that we haven't really used to understand the history of neighborhood life in New York City. I think is really an exciting idea in terms of uh, putting together the various facets of the ultimate goal we want to achieve and the ultimate goal that we want to achieve is really to see that history is an important building block for the development of civic and political participation. Mm -hmm.